So we're going to move on to, uh, and I've already talked about this, Anthony Rodrigo, CIO for Dialog, has done an amazing job. Basically, uh, as I mentioned, 45 to 50% of the registrations came from Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. Telcos can engage and be successful with developers. I think uh, James showed a very important first step that mobile operators need to be doing. So what I'd like to do now is to just play the uh, keynote that was given in Colombo a couple of hours ago. So uh, again, it's telecommunications, but with time shift as well. So uh, let's kick that off. How are we doing? Okay, so to start with, uh, first of all, I want like like to thank uh, Dialog Asia and especially Idea Mart to uh, being our partner and also what I would also call the really uh, uh, a strategic partner in this whole journey. So today to start the uh, the keynote, and this is this keynote is going to be actually telecast uh, worldwide. Right? and also it's available in the other locations with their keynotes. So first of all, uh, a warm welcome from Sri Lanka to all the other keynote uh, speakers as well as other Tad Hat locations. So from, from Colombo, we will be actually uh, running this Tad Hat in Sri Lanka, in Colombo and in Jaffna. And to start the keynote, we want to talk about a journey with Idea Mark with Zenit Mobile. As we all know, Idea Mart we started three years ago. It started at a very, very small concept, and it's something that nobody thought that it will be will gain this momentum. So what I want to do is, uh, as uh, uh, Pasi to introduce uh, uh, Anthony Rodrigo, is the CIO of uh, Dialog Asiata. and uh, I'd like to start the session, Anthony, for if you can go back the memory lane and uh, start maybe at the very beginning of you know how it all started and you know you know some of the thoughts that you had when we started the process sure sure can you all hear me yeah so uh, yeah pleasure indeed um, so Dinesh as you know maybe three years ago three years ago. Uh, we had this idea of uh, how do we at the telco innovate beyond the BAU products. Typically, one puts out 10, 12, 15 products annually, max. So we want to see, can we do 100 products a year? Couple with that, uh, also we want to see how do we partner with the developers and the OTTs to co-innovate. And the third factor was, we have huge investments on our core equipment the telco assets, VSS, etc. How to squeeze more revenue from that investment? So, like most telcos do, uh, at that time the fad was SDPs. Right? So we've seen these SDPs being deployed everywhere, but there wasn't much going on. So we thought, let's have a go, but with a twist. So we deployed the SDP to open some telco assets, but also build something on top of that to uh, make the innovation easier, engagement easier. Um, so that's how we started. Uh, but before we could invest, there was a major question mark. Where's the money? The business case. The ROI. The ROI. And it's tough because for a telco, you have the typical business plan model. You're used to modeling it based on data or minutes, but this is a very different business model. So frankly, at that time, there was a question mark around the business case. How do we make money on this thing? Uh, but with partnering with Senate, we decided to you know, build a unique, unique model to go to market, and we started. So I think, uh, Dinesh, I should remember, we, as, we, uh, as we took off, first six months also was not not that interesting. Yeah, it was it was a tough six months, you know. So I think uh, with that, I think when you were starting it, what were some of the oppositions that you got from within? And because this was a radical, this was not as not your normal um, a service that was coming out. You know, so what were some of the oppositions you 
had done the very early stage. So the first roadblock was really internally, it's about the business case, right? Um, and the second one is about, will this handleize our existing business? Because you are essentially sharing revenue with others. The telecos typically you know, get more and more share than the content provider. In this model, we want to flip it. So there was initial kind of uh, pushback, okay, should we do this, if it make any sense for this, et cetera. So how do you think, you know, I think one of the biggest uh, questions that have been asked currently is uh, how well this idea might be? You know, what, how many API calls, you know, how many developers, you know, you know everybody is very curious about this idea mark, you know, so maybe you can share some information on that. Yeah, sure. So. Um, it's been almost three year journey. Um, over the last, especially the last two years, I think we built close to, uh, together with you guys, uh, 4,800 applications. Um, there is around 2,500 active developers in the community. Um, and uh, in terms of API calls, I think well above 40, 50 million API calls a that's a huge volume for this small island. Um, now, in terms of revenue impact to the island, uh, these are these are the digital service basically. So, <coughs> digital we have the, the usual business scale business lines, uh, starting from uh, payment, commerce, <coughs> advertising, and this fourth vertical, which is APIs. Uh, so we are seeing a significant contribution from APIs now for the business. So it's, it's done well over the last two years. So which is actually, if you, if you think about it, it's no longer maybe just a, a VAS service, but it's it's becoming more of a very core important for a overall. Exactly, it's, it's no longer a hobby, right? <laughs> it's no longer a sideshow, a VAS, it's really a core business line. Coming back, if you really look at innovation and also uh, building uh, products, you know how how has this changed from dialog perspective on on product innovation and go to market? That's a great question. Um, so, uh, in fact, we woke up maybe about a year ago. So we launched it three years ago for others to innovate on our APIs. Um, however, then we want to hang on a bit. If others can innovate on these APIs, why not dialog itself? Why not we start, you know, building API on the same ecosystem, right? Apps. So what's happened in dialog is that now everybody from business lines to IT to engineering to even HR building apps and services on the same APIs. So these are internal applications. These are internal applications. You could call them enterprise applications. So it will help various business lines, or HR, for example, to interact with employees. It can be simple stuff from leave application to even password resets, right? Built through these apps. Which would have taken? See, typically, typically you would do a CR or go to external vendor, you might spend months doing this, right? Now, within days, you launch these things. And I think more importantly, there have been several business applications built within days, as opposed to weeks. months, weeks or months. It's that is fantastic. So coming back to Idea Mart itself, uh, Anthony, do you think that uh, the success of Idea Mart is replicable in other markets? You know, does that is is it relevant in international markets? Yes, um, with a caveat. So let me explain why. I mean, you, one would think that, okay, if you look at the legacy telco uh, uh, APIs and thinking, when you say APIs, you talk about DOB or carrier billing, SMS location, these are three famous APIs, right? So um, most telcos would begin to say now, well, you know what, because there are more smartphones out there, maybe it's not relevant. But I don't think so, because the reason is, when you say app, what comes to mind? Is it a smartphone app? I think most people do, right? It's a smartphone app. But I think not. 
an app for us can be obviously a smartphone app, can be a web app, or a dark phone app. Now the thing is, these smartphone apps or web apps, you can have a mashup somewhere out there. You mash up a telco API with some other cool web APIs. The combination gives you the interesting scenario. So I think smartphones actually add to the mix. It makes it easier. Uh, so indeed, the model can apply in other countries. <coughs> However, now the third, second point is that we call it P, spelled P E E, not the one thing about, but P <laughs> as in platform, engagement, education, right? Now, building the platform is the baseline, foundation, right? But that alone, it just won't fly. You have to educate the developers, you guys. We have to engage developers, explain how this thing works. Right? Even that alone will not fly. That's why I said six, seven months, nothing happened, because we had just built a platform and said, okay, let's see what happens. So the engagement, the, the part very important for us is that events like these, meetups, hackathons, where you really engage the developers to build those applications, right? That's what makes it work. So in any part of the world, it will work. Build a platform, educate, engage. And finally, the app is not just a smartphone app. It can be any one of those applications running on the web, platforms or app, smartphone or app. Yeah. So I think if you really look at it, there's a lot of local relevance that comes in here, where they actually build App, which, it, which can be whether it's a smartphone or whether it's a feature phone app, but if there is local relevance, you know, you will have a group of you know, following that group of subscribers. This is really important, Dinesh, because um, I think in the past, what's happened is that people copy ideas, right? But you can't do this in this context. These applications are very localized. So what you can copy is a concept. You can do this type of thing. But in a different country, you have to figure out what to innovate there. So that means the local community has to innovate there. So as a telco, you are basically providing the, the assets, the ecosystem to build. The innovation is out here. You guys do it. Right? Innovation comes from the peripheral, not from us. Exactly. Yeah. So if you think of, I think, because now we form the telco APIs and becoming, uh, with the, especially in the last couple of years, it, uh, it's becoming not, again, know, being in the back burner, but more of a mainstream. But if you look at uh, many telcos also around the world, and still experimenting, but if you if, if somebody wants to really start uh, and like engage and develop an ecosystem and you know go to market, what would what advice would you give them for a fresh telco? Yeah, I think. Um the first step would be um, to build that platform. Right? So you have a way to abstract your assets. Assets do not just mean can you build an SMS. If you look under the hood of Telco, there are hundreds of APIs. Um, so you can pick which assets you're going to expose. Right? Once you're sitting on a whole point. Absolutely. In fact, in dialogue, we have a whole bunch of other APIs we have exposed here, but we will soon, right? Uh, so you you have that asset base. Once you expose that, you then start doing other two E's, education and engagement. But do think beyond just apps. It's any application, software application that can run on the cloud or on the phone or anywhere. Uh, so investment is really small, I think, to get started. Your real investment is going to be in people engaging. That is cannot main advice or tell you you can't put this out there as a mass service and just let it run this work. It's not autopilot. You have to actively engage the community and uh, partner with them. So I that is very important and I just want to maybe uh, dig that a little bit further because if you really look at this is a paradigm shift for telcos. Because it's not the traditional ways 
an operator or a, a telco would actually do. They would probably, you know, decide on this is what we want to do to a, you know, maybe months of ROI and then come to market. In that aspect, you said that really that you're sitting on a coal mine and then for you to really take it out and really make that happen, you have to do that education and the engagement. Is that the two, you see, the real differentiator of making it a success in, in, in a platform like this? Yeah, this is what happened in the dialogue, actually. We, as I mentioned, you know, platform was there, but until we engaged, it didn't fly. Engagement goes in both directions. While you engage the community and they learn from you, very importantly, you learn from the community. You figure out what they're looking for. And then you start exposing more APIs. So we had, I think, initially three APIs. Now we have seven or eight APIs in there. So they start to come. More to come. So the thing is that when you're learning what the, the uh, business needs, you expose those. But you wouldn't know that unless you engage. That, that's actually that's fantastic. You know. So what's the future of idea about? It's going to be good, right? <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be interesting because, uh, as I mentioned, we only exposed a few APIs today, maybe eight, nine APIs, but uh, under the hood, we have hundreds of APIs that, in fact, we use internally today. So we will be exposing those APIs as we go along. And also, the idea one product will extend. So as you guys know, we have a few template apps today. So we have the appetizer module where we will send it give you another framework to build smartphone apps in five minutes. Okay. Really, five minutes. Downloadable right. apps with, yeah. with uh, built-in telco assets. Exactly. So with that, I mean, it can change the game in terms of how various apps are launched in certain segments. Uh, along with that, we'll also do some other telco assets we'll expose in the next uh, quarter or two. So we'll create you an interesting playground uh, of, we call this in dialogue, Legos. We give Legos to people to play with, and you can then build on top of these Legos. Right? So you will get Lego blocks to play with. What are some of the apps that you have seen in IdeaMart that actually is uh, something that you, know, you like to talk about? Yeah, we, I mean, I like personally. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, uh, yeah, so there's that one app that comes to mind. Uh, I mean, there are many apps, I said 4,800 apps, right? This app, I don't know because uh, it impacted me personally. So, uh, so the idea was, uh, it's a music app. Now this, this app is not, Say it's not running on a phone. Okay, it's a web app. So uh, there was a party at my house. Uh, a lot of young people running about. Old people, you know, young people uh, asking for music. Right? So of course I don't have a huge generation of music that can all the full range of <laughs> for the new generation. New generation, yeah. So. I recall the app, I said, let's find this app, see what happens. So we just on the big TV put on the, this particular URL and told the guys, why don't we just simply SMS the song that they want to play? So people were typing these songs, sometimes misspelled. But the system picked up the right title and played it on the TV. So you may have bought kids and you know, it has all, you know, just kept experiencing that. So this is a very interesting play of, okay, the API is simple, the telco is SMS, right? But on the back end of it, there's a bunch of web APIs working really hard to decipher that SMS, find the right tune and play. So for me, it was an interesting application where it had real use, and we had a bot, I mean, people just, experimenting with this. And it's amazing how, you know, from young to new generation, they were just picking these songs. And similarly, there are charity apps, 
there are some enterprise apps that we have launched uh, to help inventory and Salesforce automation. The charity app itself is a very interesting also because it's also mesh up, not only you know, your charity but also you link with uh, Facebook and you know, so I think that's been taking off very well. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Can see dashboards, live dashboards. Yeah. So, um, I know I think we are coming to the uh, end of the keynote, uh, so we were given a specific time. So, the, the last question is, uh, what's your message for the idea of our developers? That's a tough one, Dinesh. <laughs> <laughs> because you guys, in a way, I'm not sure what I can say to you all in terms of what to create because you know she's right here. Um, I, I know based on my observations uh, the last couple of years, the key message I can give you guys is um, don't build an app for a quick buck. What I have seen here in the last two years in Sri Lanka is that those who build an app that's sustainable, you actually engage the users, you get feedback, you continuously improve the app. Uh, these guys win, big time. So think of that app, okay, you launch, but don't give up. Even if it fails, keep fine tuning it. Iterate very, very fast. And eventually you'll make it, right? The perseverance to really, you know, get the input from the community, get the exactly. input from your subscribers, and really go on improving it. Exactly. Fantastic. So um, that's it for the Colombo keynote uh, from Sri Lanka Tad Hack um, 2015. And uh, I'd like to personally thank uh, Anthony Rodrigo, CIO of uh, Dialogue Asiata, being with us here and uh, sharing your ideas. Yeah. And you know, it's uh, I think it's a journey that uh, Senit Mobile started with Dialogue three years ago. And uh, to to me personally, I don't think uh, we ever thought that uh, this would actually take off as it has taken off in the last uh, three years. So I I I'd really like to give my gratitude for uh, Dialogue Asiata, especially for Anthony, to going out and uh, actually making it happen. And on behalf of all the developers and Sari uh, Mubad, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Great. Great. Thank you so much.